This is the Brown Girls Code Future Scholarship uh, Workshop 2021 edition. Um, you guys might know me, I'm Nima, and I'm one of your tech instructors for Brown Girls Code and your host for today. And we have a fun uh, educational workshop for you guys today. So um, topic of discussion today is scholarships. And since you all are middle school and high schoolers, this is a perfect time to learn about scholarships, what they are, why they are helpful and how to apply. So we have a wonderful speaker today joining us. It's Annette Sanchez. She is a first gen uh, student studying biology at UCLA. She loves to play the violin. And like some of you guys, she is currently learning Python. Um, so I'm going to stop my PowerPoint because Annette is going to go over some scholarship information and she's here to answer all of your questions. So let me finish sharing now. Here we go. Okay, Annette, you can go ahead and introduce yourself further and then um, you have the floor. My name is Annette Sanchez. And like Nima said, a first gen bio student at UCLA. I'm a fourth year and I've never transferred to a different college and I went straight from high school to a four year university. And so I'm just gonna share my screen now. And if you cannot see it, please help me. Does everybody see my Google Slides? Yeah, yeah, you're good. All right, so I'm just gonna present. If you have a paper and pen, that is a really good idea. When I was going through high school and middle school, we didn't really have these kinds of presentations. And I know friends who never went to college because they were unsure how to pay for college. It's a really big stressor, especially how some public schools can go up to 30,000 in just tuition. And so it's, it's really, really, really good to be financially literate and know what resources are available to you. And so here's the presentation, scholarships and financial aid. And there's four different types of financial aid. You will have scholarships, which are merit-based and need-based, grants, which are also need-based, uh, loans and work study. And so grants and scholarships are like free money that you don't have to pay back. And then work study is like having an on-campus job. That could be working at the Jamba Juice on campus, or you got a job cleaning the glassware in a lab. And then you have federal loans, which you would take out at a fixed low interest rate and you would pay it back after graduation. And so here we go, scholarships are free money. They are need-based and merit-based. And what need-based means is that it's based on your family income or your own income that if you're considered emancipated and the way the college determines if they wanna give you a need-based scholarship is they take your family income that you make and they compare it to how much it costs to attend that college. And if there's a really big difference, they will give you a scholarship based on how big that difference is. And then you have merit-based scholarships, which are based on academic performance or performance in extracurricular or volunteer experience. And you can apply at many different websites. These are just some examples. You have the Coca-Cola Scholars Foundation, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund, scholarships.com, FastWeb, Black Scholarships, Niche. And on, on a lot of these websites, some of the scholarships are no essay. All you have to do is click apply and you enter this raffle to win like $5,000, $500, $200. So you can get like a textbook or you can pay the whole semester off. And so there's two main types of grants. You have the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. And this grant can go up to $6,000. And that's the cutoff, that's the max you can get. And this is for students who are considered to be in financial need. And you must apply for this one every year. Usually the priority deadline is in March, March 1st, March 2nd. It's usually the same two days and it opens up in October. It's always in October and the deadline's always in March for the priority deadline. And then, so the final cutoff deadline for the FAFSA is midnight central time, June 30th, uh, that should say 2021, I apologize. And then you can find this at studentaid.gov. And I know that Georgia has their own state financial aid application, which is the GSFAPPS. And that's for seniors who need to complete this before graduating high school. And once this is completed, the application is good for 10 years after high school or the equivalent time the student is eligible to receive the Hope or Zell Miller Scholarship. 
and this can be found at gafutures.org. So do you need to pay back grants or scholarships? Like I said, it's meant to be free money that it's non-repayable. However, scholarships can be revoked and some organizations will ask for their money back if you withdraw, meaning you drop out for any reason that could have been a family emergency or you just felt like college isn't for you and you would be happier doing something else, which is also fine. And this is before you get your degree. Scholarships will take their money back and sometimes it will even ask you to pay back what you use, especially if it's a merit-based scholarships and they see that your grades are falling also. And then every college is different. Depending on the college you go to, they may ask for it, they may not. And if you withdraw or drop out and accepted grants like the Pell Grant, you might have to pay back half of everything you accepted on top of loans that you already have to pay back. Why are scholarships so helpful? It's free money. College is not free. It can be very expensive at times. You have to pay for books, housing, food, doctor. And if you have dependents, you have to take care of your dependents to make sure that, that they're doing fine and they have everything they need. Your dependents can be children you may have in the future while you're in college or as you're enrolling into college. It could be your grandparents who can't take care of themselves, so they're also considered dependents. And that can throw many things at you while you're in college. And it's just really nice to have one less stressor when you're already stressed out about deadlines, finals, and just a, bu a bunch of other things. And then so, and when you're going through this, college is hard. College is going to be hard. It is not easy. It is very challenging, but you have to go through this and you need to motivate yourself because this is an investment for the future. Uh, you're going to see how academically rigorous it can be. It's going to push you, but you need to stay motivated and you need to say, I'm doing this for me. And this is, this is going to help me out in the long run. And how can you apply for scholarships? Oh, and I will share my screen and show you. And this is where we will go on to FastWeb. And I'm going to show you which link to click, click on on Google. Usually there's an ad that pops up here that also says FastWeb. It didn't show up now, but that's something to look out for because that's the wrong website. So FastWeb, you want to click this link. And when you create an account, you will go to sign up. And what it would do is it's going to ask for your year when you were born, uh, your email address. It's just like creating an email. And when you do create your account, what it will ask you is just questions about what you like, your hobbies, because it will adjust scholarships to what you like. So if you like writing poetry, it's going to bring up some poetry scholarships. If you like sports, it's going to bring up sports scholarships. And if you're into STEM, it's going to bring up some really, really cool STEM uh, scholarships. And so when you open it up and when you create your account, it shows you that right now I have zero new matches since I've already checked this today, but usually it'll have a number here. And then this is your potential value. So your potential value is all the scholarships that they've listed for you. And they've added it all up. And this is the potential amount of money that you can get. So let's say I applied to all of them. I have the potential of getting 500,000 back if I win. And then these are your total matches. So I have 78 scholarships. So from 78 scholarships, this is how much I can get. And when you scroll down, you can see all the scholarships that they list. It tells you how much you're gonna get back and it tells you the deadline. And if you wanna see details, you can click the details or click the name and you can choose to apply or just flag it if you're interested or not. And you can put if you applied so you don't apply to it again. And then it tells you a description of what it is. And this one is just like a raffle. You would um, uh, send the link to your friend, kind of the way you do on social media where it's like, share your link and you get a free t-shirt or something. This is the same thing, except you're gonna get $500. And so you would just hit apply now and that's it. So it's really, really easy. A lot of these scholarships, aren't essays that you have to write six pages. Some of these organizations are just throwing out free money. So there are ones that you will have to do a paper and, but there are many, many more that you just have to click apply. 
And sometimes you're not gonna hear anything from your scholarship organizations that you apply to. Sometimes you're gonna get a check or they'll send you an email like, oh, you won, thank you for applying to blah, blah, blah. And if you still don't hear anything and it's been months and you're already entering your first day of freshman year and you don't know what's happening, when you get to college, you're going to see that the college got a call from the organization and they said, oh, this student won, this is how much money they're getting. And so the college is going to tell you as soon as you enroll. But usually you just have to be really patient and just don't stress out as much as you can. Can I pay my college tuition with just scholarships? Yes, you can. As you saw in my fast web, there's a potential of getting $500,000 and that's more than enough. And so what an award letter is, is when you enroll into college or you pick the college that you're going to go to, you're going to get um, a paper that looks like this. What it's going to show, it's going to show the total amount of aid that you're receiving. So this person is getting 40000 almost in federal aid and scholarships. And it tells you what scholarship they got. So they got a faculty scholarship for a total of 31000 and we're not gonna focus on these two columns just for now, I will explain what they mean though. And then the Pell Grant, they only received, uh, we'll just round it up to 3000. And so, they, and they also got an, one more grant for 800. And so loans and work study. There's two main types of loans you can get when you're applying for college. There's federal and then there's private loans. Private loans are the ones you can go to the bank for or different organizations like Sally Mae. When you go to college, you might start receiving a lot of mail from these uh, private loan organizations. And for the federal loans, when you apply to federal loans, you will apply to them through the FAFSA application. When you fill out your FAFSA, it's gonna ask you your family's financial history and you're gonna have a question towards the end that's going to ask whether or not you would like to be considered for federal subsidized and unsubsidized loans. And that's how you would apply for them. And you will learn what loans are being offered to you in your award letter from the college. It would look like this. It would say federal direct subsidized loan and federal direct unsubsidized loan if you chose to take it out. Direct subsidized loans are loans you would take out that do have interest like most other loans, but the interest on the payment while you're in college will be paid off by the government. And when you read this anywhere else, it will say the accrued interest on these payments is paid off by the government. And accrued just means the interest that goes up. And direct unsubsidized loans, I put bad because these are the ones that you want to refrain from taking. Direct unsubsidized loans are loans that as soon as you take it out, the interest on the loan and the loan amount is going to increase as soon as you take it out. And what work study is, is an on-campus job. There are limits to the hours you can work per week, and that's a good thing. And there's also a limit to your work study award. And what your work study award is that when you go on your award letter, it will just have another number. It will usually say 2000. That's what it looks like for me at UCLA. So that means that while I'm working a work study position, I will only be allowed to make 2000. And so it's an on-campus job. You typically work less hours per week than an average part-time job. And this is a good thing because when you work a part-time job, it's usually either 20 hours or more, or you're working 30 hours or less. And when you're going into college, you probably won't have any work experience. So work study is a really, really good opportunity to get that work experience. Is there a limit to the amount of scholarships you can get? No. You can get all the scholarship money that is offered to you. And this is a good plan. You wanna set aside an hour a day and apply for as many scholarships as you can. Pick two or three that you wanna submit every week. And you wanna try and find something you like too, something you're interested in. That way you put in a little more effort into what you're writing. And so these are some funny little pictures. You could be raking it in like this wonderful young woman right here. Or you could be this Cheeto guy from Toy Story 2, just sitting on the couch. Thank you, Annette. That was uh, super helpful. I hope you guys were taking notes. Next thing we are going to go uh, into is the scholarship essay. 
and most scholarships require um, an essay to be submitted with the application. And the essay's goal is to convince the selection board that you are the right person to receive the scholarship. Um, and what's fun about the essay is that you can and should make it personal. This uh, should show your unique voice and your tone and your experiences. Um, and it gives the reader like an insight to your life uh, apart from grades and GPA. So uh, the essay is a big deciding factor. Um, the panel doesn't know everybody. And the only thing they really know is your application form and uh, the essay. So it's an important piece. Um, so Annette, uh, do you want to describe your experience of uh, filling out the form and writing your essay? Let me stop sharing and um, I'll let you kind of go into your experience and you know if you have any tips. Well, this is very important when you're applying for scholarships, you wanna find the time. For me as a college student, I, uh, I attend full-time uh, class. I take um, 15 to 19 units every quarter. And so that's only three classes, three to four classes every quarter. So you don't wanna memorize the information, you wanna learn it. And you, in order to do that, you need to find the time. You wanna set up a little day or a little time each week that you can dedicate to applying or finishing up an application or essay, and it helps to stay organized. You wanna time yourself in everything you do. Like I said before, being a full-time student is like having a job. And you don't wanna be this little bunny from Alice in Wonderland. He's always got really bad anxiety and he's like, I'm late, the time is ticking. You don't wanna be that little rabbit. You wanna apply for scholarship, you wanna get your money, you wanna be relaxed and focused on school. And so, like I said before, you wanna apply ones that you think are interesting because sometimes people think it's kind of boring that you have to write a paper every week. And it's not even a big paper, it's like a paragraph or two paragraphs. And so these are some common essay topics that I've come across, uh, general topics, which is role models. You wanna talk about what, made, what makes them so important. You wanna talk about how their persona has influenced who you are today and who you will become in the future and what choices are you gonna make to make sure that you become the, the, pe the person you wanna be in the future? And so those are some very uh, important details you wanna take into consideration when you're writing about uh, scholarship essays that are talking about potential role models. Another topic is why are you choosing to be a woman in STEAM or STEM? You will see STEAM, you will see STEM, it means the same thing. Um, everybody's trying to transition to STEAM, but I've been noticing that a lot of scholarships uh, still use the STEM um, acronym. And so they wanna know why you're choosing to be a woman in STEM. Maybe it was a role model. Maybe you saw a really cool movie and they wanna know what about that movie made you so interested in science. Maybe it was the first time you got to use a computer and you were fascinated by how it worked, how you're able to see a screen and it, uh, has a display and you can see it very clearly. Or you can type something on the keyboard and it does it very quickly. What science is way behind that? And um, after you were inspired, they wanna know what you did to make sure that you were on the right track to becoming a woman in STEM. And they wanna know what you plan on doing with your STEM career. And um, like I said, a spe any specific topic in STEM, you always want to do your research if you already have prior knowledge, that's great. You can include that in your paper, but there's always uh, room for improvement. So do your research, even if you think you already know everything, just make sure you know um, you have the fundamentals. If you forgot anything, maybe you learned something new. There's always room for improvement. And how to write any paper. You wanna get as close to the maximum as possible. As I've said before, if it's 500, try to aim for 450, 475. And a good rule to make sure that it doesn't sound redundant or repetitive or um, just kind of plain, you wanna remove the word is. Try not to use it more than three times. And I put spitball here. I write everything that comes to mind, even if it sounds really, really horrible. And I'm repeating myself like 10 times because I forgot what I wrote in the last paragraph. I'm gonna type it again, <laughs> just so I don't forget in the next paragraph. Always, 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 always proofread. And peer review, peer review, it means um, letting other people see your paper. That could be your little sister, your older brother, if you have siblings, uh, your 
parents, guardians, whoever takes care of you. If you're emancipated, go ahead and email me. I, I will happily uh, look over your paper. All right, that was great information. Annette, thank you so much for presenting today. Like that was hardcore knowledge right there. Um, you shared a bunch of knowledge, experience that will definitely help our gals um, when applying for scholarships. All right, um, so I'm just gonna go through a quick PowerPoint. Annette actually covered um, some of the stuff that uh, I'm gonna talk about. Structure is usually like intro and then you go like body, 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 body conclusion. Um, and so when you start off your intro uh, to have a good hook because the panel is reading a lot of essays and um, you want to grab their attention like really fast and keep it. So a good hook is always good. Um, when it comes to like your body, having more smaller paragraphs is better than having a really long paragraph that you can get lost in. So if you start like a new idea, just kind of, you know, start a new paragraph and the indentions will um, catch more eyes than just having like a giant uh, paragraph. And then in your conclusion, it's always okay to be short and sweet, just kind of, um, you know, summarize your goal and the, the purpose of the prompt. So uh, that's that. And then let's focus on the prompt here. So if you read the prompt, read it really carefully, make sure that you understand what is being asked. And um, as I mentioned before, choosing a topic that excites you. Annette also covered it. Um, your essay will be a lot easier and it'll flow better if you enjoy your topic. Um, for essays that need facts, make sure you do your research and cite any sources needed. That's always uh, helpful and it, you know, enlongs your, uh, your essay a little bit if you need more characters. Um, brainstorm and plan out your essay. Annette definitely covered that. Um, and this is usually done for anything, but I you know, decided to mention it. Um, and the last one on this slide is be brief with your thank yous. Um, with scholarship essays, usually you will acknowledge uh, the reader and, you know, thank them for reviewing your application or um, thank, you know, thank you for your consideration, um, but just kind of keep it short and brief. That's always good. Uh, okay, the next one, uh, let's talk about persuading your audience. Um, Many scholarship prompts will ask you to describe a personal situation, um, like talk about a hardship uh, that you overcame or um, what's your greatest strength. So um, in your essay, be honest when you're writing about like life and experiences. Um, when you explain your hardship, be specific and detailed. Um, make your audience see why uh, the situation was hard and make, um, make them see like, you know, how strong you are by overcoming it. Um, that's what they really wanna want to hear from you. Um, you can also use the modes of persuasion, like the ethos, pathos, logos. I don't know if that's still being taught in school, but it was a big thing when I was in school a long time ago. Um, ethos persuasion uses uh, credibility. Pathos persuasion uses um, emotions to kind of grab your audience and logos would be logic. Um, you know, when you cite your stuff, that's like logic. Uh, last one on the slide is sell yourself, but also be humble. So uh, show how much you deserve the scholarship, but um, don't brag too much. Um, just show your passion type of thing. What's my last one? Okay, uh, let's cover some don'ts to do in your essay. So um, don't include too many inspirational like quotes or famous quotes. Uh, the panel doesn't really want to hear, you know, like what a celebrity's opinion is. They want to hear from you so you can include um, personal advice uh, that was given to you, but avoid quoting others. Um, also avoid cliche stories and themes. So like um, when like people refer to like the Cinderella story or the underdog story, um, you know, just try to be passionate about what you're saying and don't use other examples that um, a lot of people would probably use as well. Um, this one's obvious, but don't use profanities in your essay um, and also just avoid abbreviations like um, IDK or IMO, stuff like that. Just, you know, you gotta hit the limit of the characters. So just write it out uh, usually. Um, when choosing an essay topic, don't pick random trending topics. Um, Annette also covered this. If the prompt consists of writing 
about an environmental issue or a social issue, um, pick something that you care about. Um, and then lastly, don't put others down in your essay. Um, I guess that goes back to being humble, but that's always good. Um, okay, that's the last slide I have. Um, here are some scholarship uh, links and you can find um, a lot of other scholarships. They all have like search engines that you can look at. So um, I was just going to post this in the chat and maybe we, we have, I think some time, I don't know where my clock is right now, but we have some time to kind of look through them. So um, let me stop sharing and I'll post it in the chat and we can start um, Googling stuff. All right, so the first one I'm gonna share is one that Miss Ebony um, suggested. So go ahead and look at the chat and you guys can hit, ah, I just hurt myself, hit that link that I just posted and we'll, um, we'll look through it really quick. But really we only have like 10 minutes. So um, here's the rest of the links and you guys can start looking for some uh, scholarships that you are interested in applying for, uh, and then ask us any questions that um, that may come up. We're all here for you. Here, I'll share my screen to show uh, show the first one. Um, Miss Ebony was showing, and they have three different ones. Um, so if you guys want to just kind of look through it, um, here's the initial uh, application. It asks like a bunch of questions. What's this one? This one's a STEM scholarship and same thing. I mean, this is this process usually involves like a bunch of questions and typing and answering and thinking. So um, just take your time looking at them. Let me open up another one. Scholarships. Scholarships.com. I think Annette pointed this one out as well, but you can search for which scholarship you want. You enter all your information and then Start looking. Here's another one. My Scully. Um, here's another site that you can search for scholarships. I think you have to create a uh, login for this one. So I guess you guys can can look through them right now and maybe even start your your application if you find one that that you like. Um, definitely the one the first. Uh, the first URL I posted was from Miss Ebony, and so I think that would be a really good one to start with, and you guys can uh, start filling it out. I can post um, all this information on Discord too, just so you guys have it with you, and then we can probably post the slides as well for reference later on. All right, guys, I'm going to ask any final questions or comments, and then I think we're, we're good to go. So the question is, how much sleep do you get as a college student? <laughs> um, <laughs> during my sophomore year, I was working 30 hours a week and doing school full time. I slept um, every other day. I slept six hours and then there were key days I slept three hours. But I've also had friends who sleep all day and they still get a 4.0 and it amazes me. <laughs> and so, so yeah, so it, it really depends on you. Um, how well you process information, uh, time management. I only ever pulled um, maybe three all-nighters my freshman year. Never again. I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> it is the worst. If you can refrain from caffeine, please do. Um, if you're good at time management, you will never have to pull an all-nighter. My freshman year, we did a lot of all-nighters, and our library was 24 hours. And we're just two in the morning at the library with our Red Bulls and coffee and just like not sleeping. <laughs> but it is, it is only, well, for me, it was also only freshman. And then I was like, I can't do this. I'm going crazy. I remember I thought I was writing this awesome essay. It was like three in the morning and I hadn't slept. And I slept, woke up, read it. And I was like, dude, what, what was I talking about? I'm like off on a fairyland. So it really wasn't helpful, but it was funny. It was an experience. Does anybody have any any other questions? Any final comments? Did you guys enjoy the workshop? Was it helpful? Yeah, I'll take a nod. Yay. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Hope we didn't bore you too much. 
And um, if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out on Discord and we'll, we'll get the answers for you um, and uh, everything. Um, thank you, Annette, again, for joining us. That was so helpful, loved it. And um, yeah, you guys are good to sign off if you're ready to go. Have a good weekend. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye, guys.